Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back. In this episode number one, we're going to introduce APIs part seven, hydrogen blisters and hydrogen damage. In particular, we're gonna spend some time and really try to understand hydrogen induced cracking and its uh, cousin, which is stress oriented hydrogen induced cracking. It's a bit of a mouthful. And uh, the terminology that API uses to assess that kind of damage. And uh, we'll look at some subsurface and surface uh, HIC. Oh, we're going to look at characterizing that. So on here, we have an example of a blister on this side of the of the structure. And over here, we have the air or the exterior. And in here is an exaggerated, you know, a void created by hydrogen blistering. Secondly, here's our metal interior, our pressure envelope. And in the inside is our interior, our liquid. And partic uh, particular examples are a sour acid electrolyte, where there's lots of hydrogen ions in, in solution. That's an ideal situation to generate hydrogen blistering and, uh, and hydrogen related damage. So again, here's the blister over here on this side, followed by a corroded metal surface. And electrochemists will tell you that the rougher this surface is, the more likely you're gonna get uh, this kind of effect because there's a lot of surface area uh, typically there. So it gets worse with time. And here is a typical cavity. And I have some thoughts about, you know, why there's cavities in the steel. And the third one is, okay, so we over here, you can start to see some hydrogen showing up on the surface of the material. And then basically what happens is that it attracts the electrons that are on the metal, which is metals have abundance of electrons. And then basically what happens is the electrons combine with the hydrogen and it uh, forms monatomic hydrogen and then it induces that. And eventually what happens is you get a collection of them inside the void. And, um, and basically what happens is then they form together to form H2, which is, you know, um, molecular hydrogen and molecular hydrogen is twice as large. So it gets trapped in there. So this process continues on and on and until a pressure builds up inside that cavity and will actually expand the cavity once the yield is exceeded of the metal and it will cause blistering. We'll go over from another perspective here. So the mechanism of hydrogen blistering. So here's an example of hydrogen blistering, like a cross cut in a plate. And you can see how it's along the length of the plate where the rolling is and the rolling pl rolled plate. And um, it's basically it's the diffusion of atomic hydrogen, which is the single hydrogen. Uh, inside the steel and basically what happens is the hydrogen ions form electrons and, and that's how you get atomic hydrogen which is H but eventually the uh, and, and it's because of the presence of a cathodic surface or environment uh, uh, in the steel so we continue with that so the atomic hydrogen is so small it's the smallest you know, pretty much atom out there, and it can diffuse between the crystal structure of the steel, and it, it can move through it, and eventually um, they can form 
molecular hydrogen or H2. And once they get to that size, it, it's trapped in, this, in the lattice of the steel and it cannot diffuse through the material. So it gets trapped there. And then eventually what happens is they accumulate in these, in these voids and it generates pressure. And then what happens is the mechanism of hydrogen blistering creates physical bulging on the surfaces, okay? And basically the hydrogen accumulates and builds up pressure and this creates local stresses. And once they are greater than the yield stress, stress of the material, then uh, you can get, um, you know, bulging like the, what you see, and you can get cracks that it can extend along the periphery of the material, which is shown over here. You can start to see how these sharp edges can, can create propagation. And it can actually go right through the wall as well, depending on, you know, the, the stress field and also, you know, the properties of the material. Terminology associated with this. So this is a typical hydrogen blister and we're talking about the terminology that they use. So over here we've got our our blister and this is the background here is the, the, the steel material and so this is a plan view from the top and hydrogen blister and this is this part here is the periphery of the blister. This is where we're, we we get are uh, cracking that most likely will happen here. And um, it can also happen on the surface as well, but there's this high probability here as well. And uh, th they call that, define that variable as S, and that one is C. And it's, it's sort of a convention. I mean, uh, that's up to the inspector to sort of decide based on experience which convention to use. But they, you want to make dimensions di uh, differently so that you can analyze the sharpness of the, or like the, the shape of the, uh, of the blister. So we're going to take a look at the cross section, cross section A. So we'll take a look at the cross section here of the material. And this is what they determine is T in MM, the terminology that they use. And this is TC, which is the, you know, the, the thickness of the part. And this is S or C, depending on which direction you're going left, you know, into the page or, or lengthwise. And the height is characterized by BP. And so over there on that corner that you see, is where you can get the, the most serious type of crack that can occur because you're going to go right to the wall of the material. And it's called blister periphery cracks. It is directed inside or outside of the surface as applicable. So, so let's do some more characterization and introduce some of the terminology. So there's a surface crack, and I've got a, found a really good photograph of a surface crack. It's very common in textbooks, and I've sort of modeled it there. And it's a plan view, and you can see the hydrogen blister. So you can you can also get it on that surface as well, and or on the periphery of the of the blister. So that's called what they call a, a crown crack. We're going to start to to look at the two broad groups of hydrogen-induced cracking. So the first one we call hydrogen-induced cracking, and it's sort of you know indicative like of a step stepwise type of cracking. And uh, you know eventually these small cracks occur in, in different parts, and they can join up and cause a catastrophic failure. The other one is called stress-induced hydrogen oriented cracking. I have to say that slow, it's a mouthful, or SOHIC. And there's an example there of, you know, you have your stress occurring in your part, and then, you know, that this is where you're, this is characterized, this is SOHIC. They're a little bit harder to, to, um, to identify because a lot of times there's a lot of other you know, like there's fatigue and all these other issues that are can be associated with it. Uh, for me, I find that the most difficult one to identify personally. About the applicability of API for HIC and SOHIC. So 
they they have a few notes. They they say this is really only used for low strength ferritic pressurized components. So um, it's not to be used for high strength steels. Like any kind of structural steel is a good example. A, a very common one is a 572 where it's you know the the structure has been stressed already and also the hardness um one criterion is the hardness uh is greater than 22 rockwell c or 237 which is pretty soft or the other condition is that the tensile strength is greater than than uh, 115 ksi otherwise wise um or, or 793 otherwise it's probably you know not applicable notes with regards to hydrogen cracking they they we t we saw an image of it earlier it's, it's otherwise been nicknamed stepwise cracking and it's laminar in plane cracking with through thickness uh that cracking that is really created by you know when the cracks link together and then so that's that's actually the most difficult one to predict because uh it's hard to to, 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 you know, characterize that by inspection. So um, the steel plate is exposed to an aqueous solution. That's another um, case where you know, characteristic of that. So the example would be a hydrogen sulfide, very, very common in, you know, refinery applications, cyanides, uh, hydrofluoric acid, which is one of the older processes used that, that also can create uh, hydrogen induced cracking. And the most common is it's found in plates, but you know, a, a comment is it's less common in forgings and seamless pipes. And it has to do with the grain structure. And uh, you know, I've never really found it, but I've always thought that uh, with plate, they use a lot of, they, they use manganese to tie up the sulfides and in, in the process. And so you get a lot of, um, sulfides uh, manganese sulfides in in the, um, the steel grains and and i've always thought that perhaps maybe the um this is where the the the, the hydrogen can accumulate and that's why in plate it's most common whereas forgings um you know the the grain structure isn't you know is linear or in seamless pipes because it's you know the manufacturing process is different and and that's why also it's also you know has a higher it's considered to be a higher strength material so let's look at the mechanism of hydrogen bl blistering where where it concentrates it's where it's the biggest problem is in material imperfections like i said manganese uh, sulfide take take that with a grain of salt like I, I haven't been able to prove it, but I, it's something that I suspect. I'd love to hear what, what your thoughts are. And in areas where there's, you know, stress risers, which is in well locations, and, and that's why a lot of analysis in API 579 uh, looks at, um, you know, these hydrogen blisters in location where wells are, because they know that the susceptibility of, uh, of you know stepwise cracking and and so on in those areas. Can you with classifying the types of uh, damp surface damage? Look at surface damage, HIC damage. Again, we're using TC to characterize the thickness of the part. And here we draw a box around and we make a decision about you know the the type of step cracking in the area. Where we're going to do our examinations and uh, this is where we've identified our surface breaking type of damage and that's typical type of a surface damage that you would see and we would characterize that whole area as, as s or c that's that basically f what i call a field and then there's WH and the, the remaining thickness, that's THMM. And that's the terminology that they use. Let's take a look at subsurface damage and the, the mechanisms. And uh, basically we have TC, the thickness inside and out, okay, except we're inside the part. 
and the very similar type of setup. Here's our, we characterize our HIC damage. We, we basically, inspector would go ahead and determine the extent of the damage. And then we would basically characterize it by S or C, the, you know, the directions. And basically the uh, WH is on that side. And then we use the HTM here minus the OD. And in this case, we use this characterization minus the ID of the pipe. This is for a pipe or a pressure vessel. And uh, that's basically how it gets characterized. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.